And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, have you ever wanted to raise a princess? Yes! Oh, raising daughters is, it sounds like a fun game subject. Um, well, whatever. Okay, this is a worker placement game Ooh, from Manifest Destiny. And that has me interested because I do like this company and I do like worker placement games. And the theme, while not one that maybe I was real keen on, my daughters thought it was a very intriguing theme. So let's take a look at the game and see if it's any good. the parent of a princess and you'll pick your princess here who um, I guess they start the game at 10 years old and when they're time they're going to be 16 years old and actually they're not the princess you want them to be the princess so you're going to take little icons that match your princess and you're going to keep track of their stats this is their health up here then down here is kind of their esteem that's how the people see them down here is their heroism and then their physical prowess and their you know, brawn and smarts here. And when you reach different levels on some of these, you will get extra things. For example, you get an extra worker. So you start with two workers, you'll get an extra worker. When you get to five on the physical track, you will get some extra victory points if you get to the ends of certain of the tracks. So there's different reasons you'll want to advance on the tracks. And health you just want to keep because if you run out of health, you won't be placing workers. So the game takes place over six years and each year is split into two turns. At the beginning of each year, you're going to get money, which is in the form of copper pieces. And you will also get new traits. You're just going to start the game with traits. And these traits can be anything from here, introvert, to hungry, that's my trait, to schemer, to groupie, to noisy, to cheeky, okay, whatever. Each of these traits will give you uh, benefit when you use a certain place on the board and they also give you special abilities now these traits will be drafted from a pool of traits however if you take for example skeered and the trait that's next to it on either side shows up you have to take that trait if it's available so if clumsy comes up you have to take that and then or if the number 12 card shows up here where's number 12 problem attractor you would have to take that you only ever have two of these when you get a third one, one drops off. So you only ever have two traits in front of you at any given point. Players are then going to take turns placing workers on the board. And they're going to be doing this by picking where they want to place the workers. So let's say I want to place my worker here at the top spot. And I want to get some money. So I place my worker there. Now, I can also place money there. I can place one copper and one silver and as many gold as I want. So let's just say I place copper because that's what you're going to have for most of the game. And then maybe another player will go there later on. And then I'll place my third, my last person there. Uh, I, I actually wouldn't do that. Let's say that yellow places there is here. So now in this situation, everyone is going to get an action from that space equal to the level you're at. Your level is always one plus for each coin you put down another level. So these guys green and red are both level two and then if multiple people go to the same place that's called a friendship bonus because they're all trying extra hard you know they push each other to greater height so they would all get plus one level so green is a level three which gives them two coppers and two silvers reds a level three two coppers and two silvers and yellow is a level two two coppers and a silver and you're only ever, ever allowed to have five of each type of currency if you go over that you simply get victory points because you donate it to charity down here the levels you get are going to give you these basically smartness and physical cubes although the cubes this is the only game I've ever seen that has pictures of cubes on discs so instead of getting a cube you get a picture of a cube how low we've sunk um, so those are the only spots that are available over there down here is vacation and that's where you can restore your hit points because every time you send out a worker you have to spend a hit uh, you have to spend a hit point health because you're using that health. 
as the game goes by in later levels, you're going to randomly pull out other places to send people. There's another spot to get money. Here's a spot here to get of the red cubes and money. Here's one to get some victory points and heal health. So there's different ones that will show up, and that's going to be kind of random. And every two years, you have these big contests where you go down here and you place workers. And here you'll be rolling dice and adding those dice to your strength. And whoever wins the most is going to get a pile of victory points. You're going to continue to do this, and after six years, whoever has the most victory points is the princess, and yay, they marry the prince and whatever, and everybody else gets some sort of story ending. You basically look at the sheet and see if your daughter's going to live with you the rest of their life, which I guess is joyous in some ways, or if they go off and become an evil witch or who knows what. Now, uh, between turns, players have some things they can do. Um, they can increase their stats here by turning in a certain number of those red and blue cubes, so to go from one to two, I need to turn in two blue cubes, then three blue cubes to go to the next level, then four, and so on. So you're turning in those to increase your stats here. And there's other ways to increase your stats. You can turn in any two to increase your esteem. Um, you can turn in blue and red cubes to do that. And when your esteem hits certain levels, your hero heroism goes up too. And all these things kind of come into play, but really what you need to remember is that this spot here where these tournaments are, that's going to be where a good chunk of your points come from, but you also get points from different places on the board and from the, the cards that you have. When you win tournaments, you also have a chance to win different items, and these items can give you special abilities or have one-time uses. And then there's also, if you want to throw in some randomness in the game, you can draw an event card each turn that will do something to all the players. That's how you win. That's how you raise a princess. Well... There's some problems with this game. Part of it is the really cool aspect is placing those workers out. When you place the workers out and you put money and you get levels, that's a good idea. However, the game also has an aspect where you can pay money to reduce someone else's levels. Let's say someone puts a silver, or a, a copper, silver, and gold out and they take up the whole area and you want to do some of that area. You can pay a silver to get rid of their copper and you can pay a gold to get rid of their silver and then you can keep both those coins you got rid of. And it's very take that is she and money so small in the game as it is that it can feel very negative as other players basically just knock you down. And the worker placement thing is good and it encourages people to go to the same place thanks to that friendship bonus. Um, but the different spots to go to, there really isn't that many. It's get money, get skills, rest. Get money, get skills, rest. Ooh, there's something new to get. Let's do that too. Get money, get skills, rest. There's something new thing. But that doesn't show up till turn three, which is technically turn five, year three, turn five. So you'll go four turns without it. And I found part of that boring. Then there's those attribute cards. Now you can play attribute cards without the special abilities, which means you have to check the small icons at the bottom to see if you're getting points for going to different spots. Okay, that's okay. The attribute cards are kind of weird in that idea that you have to take a specific one if you have one that's one number away from it. Just an odd, fiddly rule. Then the, the cards themselves, if you use the special abilities, which you really want to, you just have to remember them all the time. There's special abilities all over the place, and they're constantly pausing the game and doing this. And the pieces themselves are kind of small and fiddly. So you have fiddly pieces, a fiddly uh, money thing, fiddly, the whole thing's just messing around with all these little things and all that to get victory points which don't seem very clear with a die roll now the die roll slightly mitigate it by if my strength is four and i compete in a tournament that's strength four and i roll a two my roll counts as a four that doesn't matter though if you roll a six see it, this game critically comes down to some a few major die rolls that's crazy the luck of die rolling is not mitigated across three die rolls. I literally can roll better than you three times. It, it will happen, the law of percentages, and so I will likely win that game, which then makes the rest of this hour plus long game just a moot point. My daughters like the theme, weren't real, I don't know, was real fans of that take that, moving the other coins, and again, and there was just so many moving little pieces and keeping track, oh, if I go here, I may need to lose a health, if I go here, I need to lose two health, Okay, my health's running out. I need to go here and get health. It just felt like you were doing a whole lot of work for not a lot of back in return. So essentially, they were trying to recreate what it's like to raise a daughter. Except this time your daughter marries a prince and so on. I don't know. Uh, cute artwork, I suppose. And the pieces are... 
The pieces are different than the ones in the rules, which is also strange to me, but whatever. Um, I don't know, just not, not really for me. Some good ideas, but it should have been developed a bit more. Dice Tower Judgment, Finley! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Boop. Boop.